you know, the thing I love most is um, when a project begins, anything's possible. And there's something about that moment of, um, of research. And it's researching the site and the client. If it's a restaurant, the chef, his point of view, eat that food. <laughs> and then start to find uh, interesting tangents. Um, and in some ways, the overlap for me between theater and hospitality is, in theater, you're, you're given a script or you're involved as the script's being developed. In a restaurant or in a hotel, you're extracting that script and you're developing that and creating a point of view. Uh, and so really, my, my, um, I guess my two favorite parts of the design process are the beginning when uh, you don't know the answers and you're just in a, in a, in a stage of curiosity about what could be. Uh, and then I love the, the, as that gets towards the end of the process and you're completing it, because that's when you can see those pieces finally coming together. And I often think that the, one way to, to test whether the design strategy was a good one is do you have a notion that's strong enough to survive every part of the reality that comes up from beginning to end? Budget, schedule, uh, you know, delays, um, making sure it feels right, making sure the room is even better with people in it. Uh, so they're each, I guess in some ways it's a three-act play, uh, and I find the first act the one that's uh, pregnant with unbelievable possibility. You know, I think as, as architects and designers, it's always useful to look back and see how early experiences developed um, in, in terms of where, where passion lies and what you find to be most life-giving as an architect and as a designer. And so there's, there was a, a day I was 11 years old, um, and I was living with my four brothers in uh, Deal, New Jersey which was a wonderful little suburb on the Jersey Shore. And one of my brothers, Sam and I, came into the city, and it was our first uh, big trip into the city to, uh, to go see a Broadway show. And we went to see Fiddler on the Roof, which was in the Imperial Theater. Um, I didn't know anything about Fiddler on the Roof, and I certainly didn't know about Boris Aronson, who was the, the set designer, or Jerome Robbins, or Zero Mostel. So we came in to see that, and before the show, we went to uh, Schraff's for lunch. And I, I, as, as someone who looked at dining with four older brothers as largely a competitive art form, we walked into this restaurant, and I remember the, the you know, there's certain things that, that you remember, and then there's the myth you tell yourself. Um, so, but the, the, the strong memory is of this glowing room where I was part of this community of people eating. And uh, the, I had French toast where they cut the crust off of it. Um, and it was a kind of performance. And I remember feeling enlivened by being, being in this uh, very communal place. And then we went to uh, see Fiddler on the Roof. And that was just mind-blowing for an 11-year-old kid who had been interested in theater but I think more than theater was interested in, in kind of visual storytelling. And, you know, that, that was the most amazing blend of music, dance, visual storytelling, and performance. And so that, that day, uh, I think, was the day that I was fully, fully engaged in the notion of design as a way to bring people together and to create a kind of connected temporal community um, and it's so it's kind of amazing that 47 years later a lot of the work I'm engaged with is restaurants and and theater and so those two experiences really seared into my memory I became aware of DIFFA um, right around the time that my brother Rick was um, he had been diagnosed with AIDS, and his health was failing. Um, and uh, I had been, uh, you know, uh, close to him when so many of his friends died before he did. And there was a sense of, you know, incredible hopelessness. And um, 
and uh, with Rick, I was very fortunate that we got to do amazing things together. So we got to acknowledge the importance of our time together. And, and when he died, um, you know, I was I was immobilized for a while. It was uh, it was very hard to accept, particularly because. You know, my, my whole approach to work is you can make anything happen. You can, you can create. And this was an example of, uh, you know, sort of loss and destruction that I couldn't fathom. And I was, uh, and I was immobilized and heartbroken. And, um, and I, I knew about DIFA, and I was somehow invited to participate in something called the Street of Shops that Dorothy Kalins was very involved with. And it was with Met Home. I was amazed to find this group of people who all shared the frustration, uh, all shared the pain and loss, and all shared the belief that the power of making and creating can make a difference. And that's what DIF is about. DIF is about uh, harnessing you know, the amazing generosity and talents of the design community to help and make a difference. And so I was instantly um, a big fan, and it was a cathartic experience to do this particular installation. And I still have pieces of it uh, that I've kept many years later. I think that was 94. I think there's a, there's a few things that are, um, that are critical for us as a, as a sort of culture. Um, one is to uh, to stay curious, and whenever I'm interviewing someone who wants to work here, you know, one of the things that's most interesting to me is to find where their passion is. And uh, we we often say that not knowing the answer before you begin is the key to a really engaging process. So um, maintaining curiosity looking for collaboration, looking to be able to sort of take our ideas and test them in other, other environments. Um, uh, hybrids and mashup is, is, I think, critical to our studio that, um, that we're not repeating ourselves. And it's not a hierarchical organization. So uh, if you're part of a team, whatever level you're at, your ideas matter. And I think that sense that uh, that in your way you can contribute to a bigger piece um, makes a huge difference. Um, I think as a culture we are extremely proactive and it sometimes takes four or five years of studying a project before we actually get the opportunity to do it. So I think people throughout the studio feel like they can have some connection to the lab in what we're doing in the art world. They can have some connection to a theater piece and how that might affect a hotel they're working on. So I think it's the net sum of, of those pieces that, um, that drives the culture of the organization. You know, in, in putting together the book, uh, What If, uh, being an obsessive control freak, which is what I believe most, most architects are, I looked at every possible strategy to, to create a monograph that um, was open-ended and that uh, had a point of view and at the same time looked at the work and looked at the variety of the work and, and, uh, and looking back at 30 years was, was a shock because it doesn't feel like 30 years. It feels like each project we're doing we're, we're having to prove ourselves and um, you know, there's not a sense of having arrived anywhere. It feels like we're in the middle of a journey which has a, a bigger future than it does past. But looking back at, at 30 years and being obsessed with trying to find a roadmap for how to present the work, I realized that making it a kind of question and an exploration and leading with curiosity, leading with what if it were different? What if, uh, what if the book, in fact, uh, left room for the next book was the, the key to unlocking it for me. And then the other thrilling part of it was having a chance to look back at some of the work and, and see where there might be connective tissue. Uh, I think as designers and architects, when you pursue what you're 
passionate about and what you feel is uh, kind of the open space for you creatively, you can then look back and say, well, there's things that connect it and there's ideas that connect it and that's what the, the book gave me a chance to do. The most exciting part of the book was recognizing that the work I love the most is the work we're doing right now. And I feel like we're, we're discovering that, uh, that the interest in performance and temporal and movement and the interest in hospitality and surface and materiality and structure intersect in surprising ways. And that's what I see as the, the sort of work that's now and in front of us.